Hello and welcome to uh, a webinar. This is Dr. John Sherman from the Tahoma Clinic and uh, this is a recording of a previous Tuesday talk that I presented on inflammation and aging. And uh, recently, over the last few years, uh, the combination of the two topics has become something called inflammaging. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. It's a fascinating subject. Um, inflammation is often the cause of many uh, aging disorders and uh, a cause of many diseases. So what is inflammation? <coughs> Um, of course, everyone knows the uh, classic signs of acute inflammation, including uh, redness. There's heat given off from the uh, inflammatory site. Typically, there's swelling and pain. The pain is actually protective, so uh, you uh, don't re-injure it. Um, and typically, there's loss of function, so we try to protect that. Uh, with acute inflammation, of course, it can be bacterial or viral. Uh, a serious injury which creates a lot of swelling and heat. Uh, sometimes the infection will wall off and form an abscess. Um, and uh, eventually the uh, inflama inflammatory changes that occur, uh, the abscess is either reabsorbed or resolved by gradual breakdown. Chronic inflammation uh, is a different uh, process, and <clears throat> um, like so many other uh, pathological progressions in the body, um, whenever you have uh, acute inflammation that happens over and over and over again, the body responds in a chronic inflammatory uh, process. So um, chronic inflammation, of course, can occur over many months or even years. And uh, this can uh, obviously create problems with tissue destruction, uh, fibrotic buildup, and uh, adhesions and scar tissue. Um, everyone has heard of uh, uh, people that have had a splinter or uh, maybe even a bullet in their body, lodged in their body, and the, and the body just adapts to it. It uh, doesn't necessarily uh, keep creating inflammation. Um, it tends to wall it off and protect the rest of the body from that uh, invader. Um, sometimes these chronic inflammatory reactions can be caused from uh, many different exogenous uh, sources, including heavy metals, um, acute infections, foreign bodies, and even uh, autoimmune reactions. So what are common uh, inflammaging diseases? Um, probably the most common are systemic uh, inflammatory processes. So these would include arthritis, asthma, allergies, um, and of course heart disease. And over the last decade, uh, heart disease has gotten a lot of research funding, uh, studying this whole process of inflammation and, uh, and what is going on with uh, inflammation as far as heart disease goes and, and especially within the arterial uh, circulation. Uh, and of course, when this happens in the brain, uh, there can be dementia, including Alzheimer's disease. Um, and over decades and years, uh, even cancer develops, uh, mainly as a result of a chronic inflammatory process. Um, the, uh, the more overweight we are or the more weight we carry, uh, it's more likely to produce inflammatory cytokines within the body. And of course, uh, diabetes can also result um, in autoimmune problems. So um, there are uh, benefits, of course, to an acute uh, inflammatory reaction. Um, but uh, our bodies, when we talk about our diet, um, there are certain prostaglandins that are uh, produced that are pro-inflammatory. So 
These are the things that actually uh, protect us. For example, if we twist an ankle or uh, we get a, a uh, bee sting that gets infected, uh, our body responds appropriately by providing uh, fluid to uh, clear the area and, and dilute the poison. Um, and these omega-6 prostaglandins also help to uh, stimulate the uh, acute response. Uh, once that has been taken care of, then the anti-inflammatory uh, prostaglandins take over and they help to resolve the uh, acute aspects of the inflammatory process. So um, part of the problem that's happened in our Western uh, culture is that our diet has changed dramatically to, um, in caveman days, it was fairly equal as far as uh, omega-6s and omega-3s. But uh, the more processing, the more carbohydrates in our diet, uh, and abnormal uh, alien fats, I'll call them, um, our modern diet is now much more pro-inflammatory uh, as far as omega-6 levels compared to omega-3s. Um, recent estimates show the ratio is approximately 20 to 1. And what are uh, lifestyle things that uh, actually promote inflammation in the body? You know, obviously smoking is very, very irritating to the, to the body. Uh, we talked about being obese and carrying excess weight. Um, we're going to be talking a lot uh, in a few minutes about inflammatory foods that actually uh, contribute to the inflammation in the body. And, of course, the whole digestive tract is um, a major, major source of uh, inflammation within the body. The more efficient we can maintain our digestive tract, uh, including HCL production, uh, enzyme production, probiotics in the colon, uh, these all help to reduce uh, inflammation, acute inflammation, and uh, reduce allergic reactions, uh, arthritic symptoms, uh, all down the list. So digestive tract is one of the main ways of uh, lowering the inflammatory load in the body. Um, and of course, the more sedentary a person is, the uh, poorer circulation tends to be in general. So uh, without exercise, you tend to not dilate the smaller capillaries throughout the body that go through the various organs and, and uh, finer muscles. Um, stress is another um, pro-inflammatory, uh, which uh, over time actually reduces the DHE levels, DHEA levels, mm -hmm. and, um, and it's also been shown that a lack of uh, various hormones, uh, including testosterone, DHEA, uh, cortisol, um, these can eventually create more and more uh, inflammatory imbalance. And uh, obviously we're ex all exposed to various chemicals, heavy metals, uh, drugs, the overuse of drugs. These are uh, uh, quite an inflammatory burden uh, on the rest of our bodies. So by uh, helping our bodies take care of this in an appropriate way, we can discharge these toxins uh, in, a, uh, in an efficient way on a daily basis. So what is aging? Um, there's various ways we can measure aging. We can measure in uh, years uh, alive on the planet. Uh, we can also measure how much wear and tear has actually occurred within the body, something called biological age. And uh, this is a much more appropriate way of, of really monitoring your age versus just number of years. Uh, and of course, the more wear and tear you put on your body, whether it's uh, uh, working at a difficult job or being exposed to uh, toxins, this is going to create DNA damage and, and also cellular aging. Uh, one of the uh, Recent ways that research is showing how we age is by telomere shortening. Uh, these telomeres occur, of course, on the DNA and chromosomes within our bodies. So by uh, actually measuring these telomeres, we can determine 
uh, how long the uh, expected age is for that particular cell. Um, another uh, measure of aging, of course, is cell membrane damage. And uh, many various toxins uh, are uh, accumulating within the cell membrane, which cause oxidation and damage to the cell membrane itself. So the more anti-inflammatory products we can introduce, the more antioxidants, we maintain that cell membrane uh, protection to uh, help prevent cellular death. Um, the more waste we accumulate, whatever the toxic material is, uh, that can influence our DNA um, as it uh, uh, progresses and multiplies on and on. Um, if there's a, a error in the uh, production of the DNA, that's going to be maintained uh, for the lifespan of, of various chromosomes. So. What we try to do is uh, prevent that, that uh, free radical change and the oxidative stress load uh, on the body as a whole, and uh, the body has a much easier time of uh, handling uh, these, uh, these waste materials.